right here work perfect. Welcome aboard, Perseus. No, we're not, we're on Milton. <laughs> Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome aboard, Milton. I'm your captain today, Captain Birds. I hope you know trust. Uh, it's not my real name. Um, just going to do a quick safety announcement. Um, life saving appliances are up on the roof. There are two fire extinguishers at the back of the boat, one down here at the front. Please remember, when we're alongside the bank, keep your arms, heads, legs, anything you're dangling out the window safely inside the boat. When we go through the tunnel, we're ever close to another vessel. In the case of an emergency, one of directions of your crew, you've got lovely Elliot doing the commentary. I enjoy yourselves and see you at the other end. Thank you. Lovely trip to Little Venice. Hope you had fun at Camden. Hope you all had any hot dogs. Um, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about what, about what we see through this tour. Like, like this lovely building on the left. This is um, used to be Gilby's Gin Distillery many years ago. The biggest distillery in the UK. Now it's some um, private flats. Also on the right we have the Henson building. This is this used to be the studio of Jim Henson from the Muppets, if you remember them. Until 2018, he sold it for about four and a half million pounds, and now it's some lucky people's vets. Then what's this bit of reoccurring thing here in London? So here on the left, we have some little chicks. They hatched from this nest just on the other side of the bridge. You see, we've got an unhatched egg there from the nest three days ago. 
Here on earth we have the Pirate's Castle. This was opened in 1966 by Lord St. Davis. The people kept falling in the canal, so he took it upon himself to educate them about water safety. So nowadays they do loads of charity activities. You can see all the vessels they've commandeered over the years. But while you've been in a narrow boat, um, you can rent those boats out for day trips. You can do kayaking, canoeing, paddleboarding, or our captain's favourite, paddleboard yoga. Yeah, you really great. You can join them on a Sunday morning. So we're just about to go through the London, underneath the London Birmingham Railway. This was built in 1837 and um, this was a direct competitor with canal boats, railways and canals. They both used to transport cargo. These canals were built in the eight, early 1800s, this Regent's Canal. And the canals around the UK made from the early, from the 1700s through to the early 1800s. And eventually the railways, they got really, once they improved a bit on steam engines, they got a lot better, you can carry a lot more cargo on the train a lot quicker. So they phased out the use of canal boats for transporting of cargo. Many years ago, these boats used to be pulled by a horse. Before we had marvellous diesel power, all these boats were pulled along by a horse. That's why we have the path on the right to us, that's called the tow path. It's called T O W, not T O D. That's where the horse will pull us along to get to our destination. So here we have some lovely houses on our left. This, um, we'll see on the corner there's a, a, a pink one, a light shade of pink. That was. Um, that was featured in Christmas a couple of years ago, it aired, and there was an episode of Grand Designs, and you can see the house, how they built it, just this piece one on the left. And um, it underwent two and a half years of renovations. They dug three floors underground, they put a gym, an indoor, they put a, a, a cinema, a cinema, and even an indoor swimming pool. So it was quite an expensive building. If you spend a few million on one of those houses, a nice little perk is you get to keep your boat at the end of your garden. So these moorings on our left are included in the deeds for the property. And these guys to our right, these are known as continuous cruisers. For a very small license fee, you can moor anywhere on the canal systems in the UK, even a lot of rivers. And the, um, the point of these continuous cruisers is um, that they're seven day moorings, some of them are 14, and that's so that you can, um, so you free up space, so not everyone always hogs the spaces down here in Camden Town. These are a record for a seven day mooring. People can be competitive, but it's about two and a half years. And um, you can attempt it at your own risk. Um, if you do well, right into the water ice. If not, we'll find out what a section eight is. You can see we have loads of little boats on the canal today. Nowadays, everyone that's on the, on the water, most of the people, they're either out for leisure, they live aboard. Um, but what you don't see much of is commercial. Um, definitely not freight. It's very, we'll see the odd coal boat delivering it to the boaters, but it's very rare to see commercial traffic nowadays in the canals. So now we're not too far from Primrose Hill. Um, the landscape of Primrose Hill was actually used from rubble extracted from the canals when they were being made. Um, also, Primrose Hill was King Henry VIII's private hunting ground once upon a time. And if you go there at night, it looks quite cool. It looks like something out of a Harry Potter movie. There's those little street lights on the winding up the twisty paths. Looks quite cool. So just on the right, there's going to be a lovely building after here, and that's St Mark's Church. That was built in 1857. But in the war, in the Battle of Britain, it was completely destroyed. And the building you see there now was only finished in 1957, so it's not as old as it may look. Also, if you come through here on the left, you, we were going to turn right, but you could have gone left, down to a place called Hay Market. Yes, it was a Hay Market about a mile away, but again it was completely destroyed in the war and they've filled it in since. Um, immediately left we'll see a restaurant. Oh no, we're sinking, we're sinking. Are we all swimming? Are we all good swimmers? Yeah? No, we'll the front. Let me know when your feet get wet and they'll break out the life rings. Um, immediately left we have a red boat, this is called a pagoda, and it's um, a Chinese restaurant. It's the Feng Shang Princess. One of Paul McCartney's favourites. 
also featured in a film by Guy Ritchie, The Gentleman, who's some dodgy deals down there. Um, and it's not floating, it actually is bolted to the canal floor. So these guys on the left, these boats, they, um, they're not continuous cruisers. The, the telltale side, as you see, they have a little post between the boats, that's an electric hook up. So these guys, they don't have to go anywhere. So very much a luxury on the canals to have a, an electric hook up and water and all that. The continuous cruisers, they struggle a lot with these things. So these guys, you can see, I'd say most of them don't have an engine. These these big square ones, rectangular ones, definitely don't have an engine. Um, and the very last one on the left, that blue and white one, I'm told is the equivalent to a three-bedroom flat. But uh, way more interesting, as we go past it, if you look immediately after the boat on the left, the um, the owner has some really cool bicycles. There's even a old penny carving bicycle with a big wheel. Um, and also, speaking of Guy Ritchie movies, we have some greenhouses on the right. These are used to grow all the exotic plants that feed the animals at the zoo. Also from the zoo on the left, we have some office buildings, and um, there's also flats for um, if any of the zookeepers need to keep a close watch on any of their animals, they can stay here in the accommodation. Or maybe if I was a zookeeper, I'd have to jump free, who knows? So we're coming into the zoo. Um, the School of London Zoo starts at um, starts at the Tower of London. Historically, they've always had really cool animals there at the Tower of London. Um, really old. They even have some extinct, old extinct lion remains found in the moat. But they had enough. By the 1820s, there were too many accidents. Some people would go do the gardening at the zoo and get attacked by a lion, and they had enough. By the 1820s, they brought them here to London Zoo. It wasn't open to the public. And the, uh, the story has it that the way they got the animals here was parading them through the streets with a rope. It wasn't until 20 years after that they actually opened their doors to the public. So on the right we can see, this used to be an aviary, this was for birds originally, designed by, it's called the Lord Snowden Aviary, it was opened in the 60s, allegedly designed on the back of a packet of cigarettes, and um, it was the first walk through aviary to go through and meet all the birds, but today it's the home of 15 monkeys, all the birds they did escape, now they live in Brimbo in um, Regent Park on the left. If you look closely, up on the right, we have a human enclosure, the Homo sapiens enclosure, extremely dangerous. This is Monkey Valley, and you can see they've got the, um, what is it? It is Foster there on the bridge, that was made out of wood. So the zoo's only about 15 minutes from Camden Town, you can walk there. And if you guys want to go for a run, I'd well, say um, do it on a sunny day because otherwise you'd only be hiding. A lot of the animals here, they, um, they like hot weather. So we just gone past on the left bit, there's the enclosure of the African hunting dogs. They don't seem to be around today. There's eight of them here at the zoo, there's only about 7,000 in the wild. So they're an endangered species. They look like hyenas. This next enclosure on the left would be that of two African walk folks. You see the Lion King, they live carefree, they're also big football fans, and unfortunately they're extremely shy. We haven't seen them today. Anyway, he's got to see some monkeys, didn't we? Sorry, guys at the front, I'm sorry to bother you, but please don't stand in the stairs, because otherwise we'll get in trouble. Sorry to be a pain.
You can still stand up and take pictures, it's just the stairways. I know I'm sitting on the stairs, but... Because if another boat sees us, they'll have a go. Anyways, as long as we're all having fun. coming out. This bridge was subject to the biggest no more time explosion back in 1874. There was a convoy of barges coming through, um, also a steam tug pushing them along and um, the barge in question called the Tilbury was carrying some coffee, some nuts but also some gunpowder and a couple of barrels of petroleum. So we haven't managed to get the original version of events from the sailors. There was a very big explosion heard up to 20 miles away. There's even accounts of it raining fish. So when those columns did survive the explosion, as we go past the first and last column, we're going to look at them and they have some indents, some little boxes on them. And then that's from where the horses would pull the boats through and the ropes would run on the columns and the friction created those little indents, even though they survived that massive explosion. were on today. Um, this canal was built in the 1700s, this canal was finished in 1820. They were all done by hand, by the navvies. If anyone's heard of the Irish navvies, um, not all of them are Irish. They're a very hard working force. They dug all of these canals with shovels and pickaxes. Um, they didn't use any of the steam diggers that they had back in the day. But when they finished with the canals, they went and did the railways. These are mostly old railways in the UK and they're a very hard working force but also it's a bit of a controversial subject because um, if you were building a railway and you had one death per mile that was considered acceptable, that was actually a healthy statistic there were loads of accidents with these people and they were paid very very little and there are a few accounts if they, got, um, if they were upset and they started to create some trouble um, they wouldn't send them a letter, they wouldn't call in the police there are a few accounts of the army having to turn up to keep the peace. So there you have it, all the Irish navvies, they work really hard to do these canals. There's a river running through this bridge we're going under. Um, there was a river, the River Tyburn, going across the course of the canal. And the way they overcame this obstacle was running it through some pipes just above us. The pipes do leak, I'm told by some of the skippers that they do leak, so now it carries water. It's the River Tyburn. The River Tyburn is one of London's seven secret rivers. Also, it's, it's not the biggest, but it runs most of its course underground. So here we're going to have two things happening around us. We have the Villa Mansions on the left, and Grove House on the right, where the gardens for Grove House. So these Villa Mansions on the left, they are... Um, there's six of them, and each one is built to resemble a classical style of architecture. They've only been built from 1988 to 2004, so they're not as old as they may look. Um, I'm told one of these first ones is owned by the Freemasons. There's a couple owned by the US Embassy, and even one down the end is privately owned by a Russian billionaire. So what we have on the right is the Gardens of the Grove House, the biggest private gardens in London. Um, they're not at open to the public, unfortunately, and we'll get to see Grove House in a minute. Grove House was built in 1822, Grade 1 listed. That means because of its historical significance, it can't be modified in any way. And we can see it just coming up on the right, it's say a cream-coloured house. Now there's a few stories about the people that live here. Um, or don't live here, the owners of these properties, these, these properties are all assets. Um, none of the owners actually live here, and if they come to London, they, there's a few stories about how they stay in hotels instead.
you do see a lot of workers, there's the other guards, I know you do see quite a few workers around here, but I have yet to see any residents. See on the right the graffiti is being painted over. This is because the people that live here in the Villa Mansions, they pay a company a couple times a year to paint over the graffiti, only as far as they can see from their front window. So you can see it stops after a short bit. Sorry guys, please don't sit on the stairways. Sorry, thank you. If you, if you shut the door, you can sit on it, but you won't be able to see as well. Yeah, so I don't want to be a pain, it's just, it's just the company, I'm really sorry. So we're ending Regent's Park, and we're getting into, um, this is going to be Mystery Grove. Sometimes the horse would get scared because steam engines are really, really loud and um, sometimes the horse would get scared and even jump into the canal in a panic. So when you go under some of these old railway bridges in the UK, there are steps for ramps for you to recover your horse. There's not one right here, there is one back in Camden. Under this bridge there is a gang of pigeons and have been for about a year now that they've seen them go. What's trying to avoid eye contact with your road? We have some hand boxes on the left. In a big way so we're having fun. So we're going through the second site, the Lord's Cricket Ground, which um, was here from 1811 to 1813. And so they now he came through here making their canal and they asked him if he could move it. So the whole thing was moved down to St John's Wood which is about a mile to our right. You can see this little gate here on the right, that closes about, what about this time, about five, six o'clock it should close. Um, but other than that, you can go and explore all the boats. Uh, my boss was on board the other day, he asked us, um, we need to be very factual at the water bus, not as many jokes. So he made us count the boats, there's 57 boats. He, to be honest, he counted and I just agreed with him. So there's 57 boats here, apparently. Um, you can see a lot of them have been modified, they wouldn't fit through a tunnel under bridges. Um, I'd go as far as saying a lot of these boats don't have engines and probably the ones that do don't really work that well. But that's fine because these guys, they're not continuous cruisers, they're not required to go anywhere. They're permanently here. And um, so I'm told these guys are on grandfather lease and they say grandfather lease around here is 60, 70,000 pounds, more or less. Um, then you've got 10, 12, depending on what kind of boats you have, in the and fees. Still got to find a boat, the cool thing about boats is keeping them working, um, that's going to be another expense. Even if you have a working boat and a bit of spare change, you'd still have to wait about 25 years to get a mooring here. And what these guys didn't count on, they have a building there, that building is St John's Wood substation just above the Red Wall. And in 2018 that building was voted the ugliest building in the UK, yes. They do have an open day if you're so inclined. Um, before it was a substation, it was a coal depot, so boats like this would come here and unload their cargo. And the Red Wall is from when it was a coal depot and they have um, the little indents are um, from stables. Here we can see a little crew swimming up to the boat. Um, the local wildlife, they love the water bus. When I started here they told me it's not good to feed ducks bread apparently. It's not too good for their digestive system. So um, here at the water bus we give them stuff from the pet shop. I wouldn't call them treats, they're like all pellets. Um, but yeah, we, we like to give them a nice meal. So they instantly associate our boats with food. Gets some nice pictures. 
So there's a tunnel up ahead, we're going to go through it in a minute, and the house on top of the tunnel is known as the upside down house. Um, one of the boat managers used to live here many, many years ago. But the reason it's called the upside down house is because you go in at street level and you've got your living room, your kitchen, all the normal stuff. But when you go to bed, instead of going upstairs, you go down into the basement. So that's the upside down house. Also, a bit less factual, but way more entertaining. Just after this green boat on the right, we can see there's a um, bathtub on the roof of the boat. And on a really, really sunny day, you can actually see the owner going for a swim. <laughs> we see another group on the left trying to grab a meal. So all of these, you see the little paths, you can walk all along the path and talk to the guys. And if you ever talk to a boat, they're really nice people. You may ask, um, oh, could you help me with this thing? Maybe they can, maybe they can't. But even if they can't, they'll still tell you an hour-long story about something probably unrelated to that thing. So we're about to head into the Mayda Hill Tunnel. The tunnel is 248 metres long. Please be very careful when you're in the tunnel. Only two people have ever fallen in and they never made it out. So please be very, very careful. Um, other than that, we're going to have loads of fun. This is a, so the tunnel, they didn't have a towpath when they made it through the tunnel. They, they, they didn't make the towpath. So if you relied on a horse, how would you get your boat through? Well, you'd have to take the horse through to the other side and then you'd, um, you'd have to use your legs along the side of the tunnel to push the boat through, walking it along the tunnel. That was known as legging it. Legging it um, nowadays means doing something in a bit of a rush, but um, back then it was a very slow thing. Very slow. It's taken about an hour to get through, just under an hour to get through this tunnel. It takes us five minutes. And as we can see, the way is clear, so we're free to go. There's no traffic lights here. The right of way is whoever arrives first. And then as long as you've got your lights on, the other boats can see you coming, no problem. significance of our tours and our lovely common tree. And uh, so when we did that money, it didn't definitely didn't go on, um, on the local pubs. We built a simulator to see what it was like to go through here in the 1800s, yes. Yes, I built it myself. Um, we're going to give it a go, okay? Can we within tents? If anyone's uncomfortable, give us a shout. We'll try and get it back to normal. We're going to give the simulator a go. Are we ready? Yay! 
Channel crossing, welcome to France. You can see the moving people are much happier here. The boats are nicer, and the weather's nicer. Um, there was a family of coots here, there's, um, there's only two of them now, they're about a month old, and they should be. Well, when we saw that they were in the great boating house on the left, um, we might go for a little swim. Let's see if we can spot them. You guys at the front are responsible. If you see any baby ducklings or anything, you have to give us a shout so we can get some nice pictures here at the back. It looks like they're not in today. You might be good for a swim. You might be able to spot them if you go far. So we're in Mega Vale now, also known as Media Vale. Loads of celebrities decide to splash out on real estate is so here. Way too many to name us, remember. But um, at the end of this, you see there's a blue bridge at the end, that's bridge number one. That's how you find out where you are on canals and rivers, um, bridges and locks and all of that. That's how you know how to locate yourself. Um, so that's bridge number one of the Regent's Canal. And that's where the Regent's Canal ends. We could go left to the Paddington Arm. It's quite short, but it's nice. There's a few restaurants there if you guys want to go later. Or you can go straight on all the way up to, through the Grand Union, all the way up to Birmingham. And then you can cross across from Birmingham to Manchester. Um, there are loads of canals around the UK. Um, Back in the day, the, the origin of transport on water was actually rafts. So people would build a massive raft, um, fill it with whatever they needed, and they'd send it downstream, only downstream. And when it arrived at its destination, they'd deconstruct the raft, and all the wood would be used as timber for building up whatever they needed. So that's where it all started. And then they realized that a horse on the road would struggle to pull maybe two tons, and that would, that's enough to stress a horse, horse on a stagecoach. So then they realised that if a horse is pulling a boat like this, it could carry about 25, 28 tonnes. So that's why they used um, canals for transport back in the day. Then obviously a railroad can transport so, so much more, and eventually motorways, motorways, yeah, they, they finished it off. Nowadays you still see the old traditional narrow boats sometimes. There are, when we park up, there's going to be two traditional, very traditional barges. Um, one of them says British waterways, and that's good. It's worth a lot of money. Enough about boats. You want to know about the houses? This house on the left, with the um, with the ivy coming in ivy, that was bought in a fitting war between Madonna and Barbara Streisand. At the end, it sold for twenty seven million pounds. And it's only the one winner out of all these divas. It was obviously Michael Flatley, the star of Riven Up. One of the nicer boats here is Philona, just on our right. This was owned by JP. Dave Stewart of the Eurythmics, and he yep. even lent it to Bob Dylan in the 90s to record a video for um, Blood in My Eyes. Our captain does a really nice impression if you want to ask him. I think you should ask him. Yeah, this is a nice little boat, nice attention to detail. So again, as we agreed, whatever you do, don't buy a boat. And if you do, make sure it's not wooden, but still go. If you do want to have a go on a boat, I'd say the only safe way to do it is this very last one on the right. It's a blue boat, and it's called Scorpio. And that is an Airbnb, and it's very nice because you can rent it out for a couple days and then return it to its owner for them to do all the lovely maintenance. So that house just before the bridge on the right, that was the toll house, and we pay them accordingly, according to tonnage. The more weight you carry, the more you pay. And the way they figure this out is because on a canal boat, so this one, there's 70 foot for standardization reasons. Um, some of them are 72, but anyway, 70 foot for a canal boat. If you put a thousand kilos in a canal boat, in canal water, not in salt water, 
um, it will sink into the water by one foot. So when they're painted, they get these things called draft marks, little lines, and they show you how deep the boat is in the water. So the person here could come out, have a look, see how deep your boat is floating, and charge you accordingly. Um, if you're interested in transport and all that kind of boring stuff, you can have a look. There, there are loads of records of how much ships have paid to go up the Thames, for example. And the amount of tons that they carry means that back in the day, proper seagoing vessels would go up the Thames quite far. But anyways, you want to know about the famous people. So we're going to go into Browning's Pool, or Pennington Basin. It's named after um, the famous poet Robert Browning. Robert Browning is a famous poet, and then he also gave this place the name of Little Venice. I've not yet been to Venice. And, um, to be honest, I don't know who had either. So this island in the middle, that's Browning's Island, it's a nature reserve, it's a bird sanctuary specifically, so all the birds there, they um, they can't get disturbed. We've had people try and go up there and bother the birds, but they, they um, it's actually quite illegal to go and bother the birds. You can see on the wood, on the wood and on the stick, there's a black bird, I don't know, I'm not too good with wildlife, but this is, um, it's a seabird, they eat fish. And there's loads of birds here that come to catch a meal because in this canal, believe it or not, we have a very big fish, quite, quite big. So there, here we have the most interesting part of the tour. You see this boat in front of us says British Waterways. Um, that means it's worth a lot of money. Um, actually, that's that's not worth. That looks cool. But if you guys go down to Paddington, all the way down to Paddington, the last boat on the right looks kind of rusty. But that it also says British Waterways, and it's the first ever crane barge by British Waterways. It's um, it's a liability, but it's really really amazing. So as you can see, there's a little barge on the right. That's what we used to do here traditionally before there were tours and liverboards and all of that. This was a barge holding point where all the guys would wait here to um, go onto the Regent's Canal. Okay, so we're almost done. My name's Elliot, our captain, Captain Birdseye today. Andrew, sometimes we call him. If you had fun, you can leave us a review on TripAdvisor. If you didn't, my name is Callum and um, our captain's name is Joe. But, um, as we pull in, I'm going to ask you guys to please remain seated um, until we give you the go-ahead, because my boss could be in one of those other boats and give us a go. Anyways, hope you guys had fun. Welcome to Little Venice. Thank you. Thank you. Je <laughs> 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 How much did it cost to build the simulator? <laughs> I've only worked here a month, but I didn't make you do this anyway. It's just a way to make it fun. It looks nice. If you get a sunny day, it really looks really like, impressive when you come out. Thanks for the time, man. All good, man. Got exactly what I need. You know where you're going? I do. Enjoy. I see. Come this way. Thank you. 